Um, thank you for those who are joined. Um, so my name is Jasmine. I'm one of the co-founders of the Radiant Boost. And for anyone who doesn't know who we are, we are an online data science mentor guided school for the African continent. So today we're very excited. Uh, we have Mark Santino from mm -hmm. yes. Tableau in the New York office. And Mark has a bunch of experience with market intelligence, strategy initiatives, and obviously with Tableau. And um, he's here to speak to you about what Tableau is. It's a very important tool that anybody on a data science journey will encounter. So uh, Mark, we're very, very uh, grateful to have you. And the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, certainly my pleasure to be here. Very, very excited. Okay, so normally this is something I probably spend maybe three days talking about. <laughs> I really have one hour. So I'm just going to jump into it. So if it wasn't evident prior to the pandemic, it must be much evident now. Okay, you know, every organization okay, is a data organization. Okay, and if you have not caught on to that, uh, you better catch on to it fast. Otherwise, you're really going to be out of business. All right. Uh, the importance of data to the modern enterprise. Okay. You've got a challenge. Okay. And an opportunity. The opportunity is we all get to work with data and we do so every day, whether you actually you stop to realize it or not. The challenge here, though, is that uh, the technology, okay, is really not, you know, enough, whether it's Tableau or some other tool. They might all be wonderful tools, but it's really not enough. You really have to shape your organization to kind of fit what you're looking to accomplish. And you may have to modify it, okay, as time goes on because those challenges will change. So uh, the uh, the approach some years back used to be more of a more more of like a slower method whereby if if you had a requirement for some kind of data analysis you would put in a request they would maybe go to an IT area they would spend a month or two kind of pulling things together for you and maybe give you some kind of a chart or a graph and then uh, by the time it got to you it was totally obsolete because everything had changed well, that's not really how it's done anymore. Now, a lot of it, the emphasis is really more on like a self-service platform, okay? So the old style approach really doesn't fit the modern approach of really what we're looking for. And it's all about how is the data being governed? Because that's really at the center of this whole thing. You've got to be, be able to control it. People have to have confidence in what you're trying to do, okay? So... Let me go on to the next one here. So why is it important? Well, <clears throat> as I said earlier, okay, it has to be, I have to have some confidence in it. So the data has to be secured. You know, who has access to it? You know, who doesn't have access to it? Uh, what's the quality of the data? Uh, is it very, very consistent in its quality or is it, you know, questionable? You know, where did it come from? You know, can I rely on it? If I'm going to make a decision on this, whether I'm going to invest in a property, invest in people, I'm going to start up a hospital or whatever the case may be, is it something I can actually rely upon? And I can stake my future on, okay? So I've got to have trust and confidence in that. And also, okay, it must be a consistent user experience. So, if the data is good and we've got confidence in it, that means that we're all basically reading from the same page book, so to speak, okay? And we're all going to come out with those same numbers, all right? We're not going to get different numbers if we all get into a room because once that happens, you've got a really big problem. And then finally, it's got to scale, okay? Because uh, where you are now may not really be where you're going to be six months or maybe one year from now. So as your organization grows and you take on more responsibility, the governance model and your data platform must be able to scale with it so we can support you, okay? And there are various governance models, and I can definitely share some resources with you on that, you know, if you're interested in it. But uh, again, you know, uh, here's another thing where if you settle on one governance model today, it might actually be that a year or so from now, you're on to another one. So I really won't spend a lot of time in that, okay? Okay, working with Tableau. This is the big picture here. Okay, so uh, I, I, I won't go through all these. I'm just going to point out a few things here. Uh, so much of what I'll be talking about today will be uh, Tableau Desktop, which is basically right here. Okay, um, so I'll do my demo, but many of you may have heard about Tableau Desktop. Some of you may not have, and that's quite all right. But basically, this is what you're going to use to do your uh, the creation of your visualization. 
uh, do the ad hoc analysis and hopefully maybe share it with some of your colleagues and maybe you know throughout your organization. Okay. Um, time permitting, I will get into Tableau Server. Uh, this is a platform that I can now use to take anything I do on the desktop and expose it to a much wider audience. And naturally, actually does a lot more than that, but I'm going to kind of uh, simplify it. Okay. And then finally, and I'm going to return to this at the end, Tableau Public. Now, some of you may have heard about Tableau Public, and if you have, that's great. Okay. Others, that's okay, because I'm going to talk about it. But basically, this is a free platform that you can use. It doesn't take much. All you have to do is sign up. We ask for your email address. Um, we don't spam you. And that's it. You're off and running. Um, there's a very, very thin client that you can download and you can actually work to create your own visualizations. Okay. So I will have more information on that towards the end of this. And then finally, there's a Tableau reader and that's kind of gonna, that's going to be going away. I think in a few years, so I really won't spend a lot of time on that. But the big picture is this is kind of the universe, I guess, so to speak, you might say, or, you know, uh, the ecosystem for uh, Tableau. Uh, as far as uh, the data sources, we pretty much read anything. Um, Excel sheet, server-based information, something from the cloud. Um, there's very, there's really no limitation that I know of. Uh, about the only limitation I can think of is generally sometimes when the data comes in, it is maybe not clean enough. Um, uh, we'll read it, but it may not really make a lot of sense in terms of what you try to do with it, okay? And also, you can have it on your mobile. Um, I actually have it on my mobile phone. You can put it on an iPad or an Android tablet or something like that, if that's something that you're interested in as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> before we get into a demo, if I had to kind of sum up in maybe ten words or less, you know, how do I work with Tableau? Well, this is on the desktop side now. Okay. Uh, you connect to your data, whatever that data happens to be. Uh, then you obviously pull in some elements that you look and work with. Uh, you do the analysis of it, and then perhaps you share it to a wider audience. Okay. Um, what you'll notice here, as I get into it, we really don't have a lot of wizards in Tableau Desktop. There's really only one, and the idea behind that is is that we really want you to kind of, you know, explore, get basically get dirty with the data. You know, make the mistakes. That's quite all right, because that's really the best way that you will learn what works, what doesn't. Uh, and the product has been evolving since I've been on board, and I'm in. I'm into my sixth year now. So what you should be seeing is the landing page for Tableau Desktop. There are these three little sample icons at the bottom. Okay, if you're not seeing that, please let me know. We can't see it. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, so. When you sign into desktop, this is the first place you're going to go to. Okay. Um, and, and essentially what's going to happen here is on the on the left hand side, it's going to ask you, hey, you know, what do you want to connect to? Is it a file base like Excel or text? Maybe, maybe like, you know, we can talk to a PDF file as well. And not many tools can do that, quite frankly. Uh, is it more of a server base? Is it Oracle? Is it Microsoft SQL Server? Okay. Is it something in the cloud? Okay. So you really have your choice. Um, I'm going to connect. So I, I'm actually going to do this one of two ways. As, as as in everything else, as as soon as I put something together, I said, "Oh, I should really kind of done this for them," but I didn't want to get too crazy. So I'm going to take uh, two approaches to this. Uh, okay, I'm going to open up one data source initially, just to kind of show you how to work with it. All right, and I'll do a few things in there, and then I'm going to switch to another one to maybe show you a little bit more on the complexity side. Okay, so I'm connecting to an Excel worksheet. All right. <clears throat> and this was called uh, Global Superstore. So now, getting back to what I originally said, hey, how do I work with Tableau? Well, there's the connection to the data. So that's, that is pretty much where I am now, okay? I am connecting to my data. Now, uh, when you work with Excel, many of you probably already know that you could have multiple worksheets within one Excel workbook. This particular data source happens to have three worksheets. <clears throat> There's an orders sheet, uh, a people sheet, and a return sheet. And just to kind of give you a sense of what this data is all about, uh, apparently this was modeled on one of you know, the office uh, superstores. Those are the stores that sell lots of office supplies, chairs, desks, that kind of thing. And from what I understand, it's actually a real store, but many of the names have been changed. So 
uh, we have all purchased something at some point in our lives. So this this data, while it might not be very 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 uh, specific to maybe a particular you know a country or region, it is specific to all of us in that we've all made a purchase of some type. So the way to work with this is to simply either find a sheet if we're talking Excel that you <clears throat> that you want to work with, pardon me, and either drag it out because it actually tells me, hey, drag those tables right here. So I can just simply take it and drag it out, throw it in there. Tableau is going to read it, okay? And it's gonna basically analyze your data at least enough to say, okay, I can recognize the content, okay? I know what the column headers are. Um, and it's gonna give me 1000 rows just as a sample to show me that, hey, you know, is this what you really want to work with, okay? So once I can kind of look at that, and there are lots of things that I can do in here. I'm not gonna go into that right now. I'd rather take you to the bigger picture. But essentially, this is connecting directly to my Excel worksheet. Now I do have an option where I can take an extract of that sheet, okay? And an extract is basically more like a snapshot of a piece of data over a piece of time. I can actually do that as well. That, that doesn't really apply to our situation here, but that is an option that you have available to you. So I've made my connection. Now I'd like to work on the analysis portion. And there's a little thing down here. It might be difficult to see. It says, hey, go to worksheet. So it, it has the uh, sheet highlighted with orange. I'm gonna select that. Now this is my worksheet. Um, and the way the data is presented, and some of you are, may be familiar with this already in terms of some of the terminology you're going to be using, but if you're not, that's okay. Um, we split up the data into a dimension or a measurement. So think of a dimension as something that has a value that is basically fairly static. I mean, if it changes, it changes maybe once in a blue moon. Uh, maybe the name of a store, the name of a client, you know, the order ID, a date, okay? These are, these are values which once they're created, so to speak, they don't really change. On the other hand, okay, if I have a measure, that's a number. That can change constantly as people start to buy my product, okay? I'm selling more, so that number is increasing. I'm making more revenue, so that number is increasing. So measures always change, okay? They're rarely static unless you go out of business or something like that, right? Dimensions, for the most part, they're static, okay? So in terms of working with any of this data, it's really more of a drag and drop, and there are other techniques, but I'm gonna stay with the drag and drop. So I'm gonna start with a measurement. So just to give you an idea of what's in here, there are sales data, quantity, profit, really, really basic things. There is some date data in here, regional, there's some geographic data here as well. Okay, and I'll, I'm gonna get into some of how you manage that. But right now, I'm just gonna take sales and just kind of drag it out, okay, and throw it into my rows. So think of an Excel sheet. You got rows and columns. So it's, it's very, very similar to that, okay? Now, what you may notice is that once I dragged sales out, I got this blue bar. Tableau aggregates, that's, that's the default behavior that we'll always do. Now you can obviously modify that, but if you don't do anything, when you drag something out, it's gonna aggregate. And we aggregate to the level of dimensions in the viz. So right now, I don't have any dimensions in the viz. All I have is a single measure called sales. So Tableau is saying, great, you want the sales? Here you go, I gave you sales. These are all your sales. But if I want to now start to say, well, you know, what would my sales for a particular country or a particular state or a city or something like that? That's a different story now. So as I start to drag out country, let's say, and I put it on to, oh, doesn't like that, okay. <laughs> Try it again. And I put it on to, let's say my columns, <clears throat> and I'm gonna turn that around. Okay, so now what has happened is I have taken that one massive chunk of sales and I have now aggregated it on a country level. So that means that the more dimensions I add, the more granularity 
I bring in to the viz. Now, obviously, this is going to get kind of ridiculous because it's getting smaller and smaller. But I want to just convey to you that that's the default behavior. I'm going to aggregate. So my dimensions give me granularity. So when you do your analysis, you can go really high, which is a good place to start. And then you can start to drill down into more granular type of data. OK? So that's the default behavior. <clears throat> Pardon me, of how that's working. I'm going to wipe this out. In terms of working with some of these other data uh, elements, um, it really obviously depends upon what you want to do. Tableau has actually gotten pretty smart over the years, and when it <clears throat> when it actually reads my data, it'll it'll basically classify it into certain terms or maybe categories. So, for example, I have a I have a field that's called a country, one that's called a state, one that's called a city. Well, Tableau, when it read that, recognized the fact that, hey, you know, these are geographic elements. So it made them geographic, which means that I can now take country and I can simply drag it out. Okay. And it's going to generate a map for me. 